I just marinated it in plastic. We don't like plastic, we like glass. Why do we care about all this plastic? What's the big it's deal? It's a toxic bomb. Our whole practice is based on getting you to be the best version of yourself. Remove the crappy foods, the wheat, the dairy, the sugar. Everything we do is based in the medical literature and, and evidence-based medicine. We're gonna look at how to get you healthy, not how to get you on medicines, how to get you off medicine. There's a couple of very curious things that CBD oil does, helping people with migraine headaches reduce the frequency and intensity of their headache. People that have ADD or ADHD, anxiety or mood swings or depression, these things can help decrease anxiety and make a child more calm. Lyme has been found from coast to coast. 50% of all counties in the United States have Lyme disease documented. Well, Hello. it must be Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. I know, we're an hour late. It's 4 o'clock, not 3 o'clock. Give us a break. <laughs> Good to see you on a Wednesday afternoon. And Hello today, there. we're bringing up a very favorite topic of both of mm -hmm. ours, thyroid. So if you're watching this and you knew we were talking about thyroid, there's a very good chance, because we see this mm -hmm. a lot. People yeah. come in and, and they, they think they have low thyroid and their doctor says, I've checked your labs, they're normal. You don't have thyroid problems. And on your way. And off you go. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're depressed. Here's some Prozac. Mm -hmm. um, and we hear that a lot. Yeah. And so we're here to tell you that there's a lot more to it than the simple lab your doctor may be checking. Mm -hmm. And we commonly see patients that they were right. They did have low thyroid and their symptomatology is consistent with it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, without throwing anybody under the bus, our modern approach, which is dating back to the 1950s of how we assess thyroid is pretty limited. So we're gonna go yep. through, what are the labs you need to have checked? And it's not just a TSH, I can tell you that. So what are the labs you need to have checked to really identify if you have thyroid disease? Mm -hmm. And your symptoms are at least 50% of that equation. If your symptoms of low thyroid, so Chelsea, what are the symptoms of low thyroid? Low energy, yeah. your hair's falling out, you're fatigued, um, you can't concentrate, can't really think of words very well, maybe you've got the thinning eyebrows, mm -hmm. um, weight loss is difficult, the brittle nails, irregular cycles. Um, what else am I when missing? When you go online, you could go Google yeah. symptoms of low thyroid and the list is about this long mm -hmm. because what we have to remember is thyroid affects every single cell of your body, every single mm -hmm. cell, brain, heart, bone, muscle, liver, gut. So think of all Everything. those um, systems and now think about reducing the energy to all those systems. You're everything's burr. going burr. Okay, yeah. so everything's slowing down and everything's slowing. Your muscles ache because you're mm -hmm. becoming acidic. You climb a flight of stairs and your legs feel like you just ran a marathon. Uh, and most people think it's just weight loss. Oh, I can't lose weight, I can't lose weight, which yeah, it could be prohibiting you from losing weight, but like you said, it's everything. It's affecting how we digest our food. Mm -hmm. It's affecting how we think. It's affecting our anxiety level and our depression. So it's not just weight. And to just help make sense of that. So if your thyroid's normal, it stimulates your brain, not to be overactive, mm -hmm. but it stimulates your brain to make the neurochemicals that make you feel calm. Mm -hmm. And without it, you feel anxious and depressed. Mm -hmm. Most depressed people, most, most depressed people have some thyroid as a part of the issue as to why they're depressed. You mentioned gut. Mm -hmm. In order to have a healthy gut, I need to make digestive enzymes and break down my food. Without mm -hmm. thyroid stimulation, you don't do that so well. So people with low thyroid tend to be constipated. They tend to have gas. So all of these are, are very food common, food undigested stool. food. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the symptoms. And if you're recognizing that you have some of these, then maybe there is some low thyroid problem. Um, so why would the thyroid be working just fine and then suddenly begin to falter. And suddenly not. Yeah. Stress is the biggest reason why your thyroid will be working great and then over a few years mm, not so good. Chris has got a graphic he's going to throw up of this this pyramid system because just as Chelsea alluded mm -hmm. to stress is the king. Stress is at the top of the mountain mm -hmm. and stress is dictating to your thyroid what to do and mm -hmm. if stress is high and cortisol is high it's telling your thyroid sit down and shut up. <laughs> it's telling your hormones to sure. sit down and shut up. Yep. It's going to affect um, your sex hormones, um, your glucose, your insulin. Mm -hmm. So all these things are being affected by cortisol. So we often hear, oh, well, yeah, so stress can affect your yeah. thyroid, but? But, oh, I'm not stressed. But then you look at their day, <laughs> and they've got two jobs, four kids. They, they're doing school at night, and, 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 and. Yeah. But, you know, I'm managing it. You've got so much I'm on your plate. It. I'm managing it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm hanging on by a thread. They're burning the candle, or the, I knew I'd mess it up, the wick at both ends. They're burning the wick at both ends. <laughs> both ends. That's a Chelsea. I can't them. say any. Uh, <laughs> Cliches. Cliches. I can't say any because I mess them up. <laughs> that's, that's her hallmark. So, 
<laughs> so they are. They're burning the candle at both ends. Mm -hmm. um, it is normal in today's living to think that you have to be busy 28 hours a day. It's yeah. normal for people to be overcommitted, overscheduled, too many texts, too many emails, uh, too much activity. Mm -hmm. So stress is everything. If the weather is exceedingly hot, like it's been 90 degrees, that's a stressor on your body. If it's really cold, if you're eating processed food, if you're taking medication, the fact that you put drugs into your body is a stressor on your liver. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about stress, we're not talking about, oh, biting your nails, anxious. That's, yeah. that's one kind of stress but we're talking about any demand on your body. If you don't respect your sleep cycle, if you don't sleep and repair your bodies at night, that's another physiologic stress. So those are the day-to-day, -day, but then <coughs> we didn't even talk about the big traumas that people go through. I mean, car accidents mm, or mm -hmm. deaths in their family or surgery. I mean, that's a huge stress. So think of it this way. If you have those physiologic demands, it's mm -hmm. a stress on your body. Your body has to manage how much energy you have. Mm -hmm. And so with a car accident, with a surgical procedure or some major physiologic stress, the body has to, to manage your energy. And so it'll turn down thyroid because it needs the energy to heal from that car accident or it needs the energy for another purpose. Mm -hmm. Think about uh, cavemen. When we were stressed, it was mm -hmm. because there was either famine or a saber-toothed tiger, right? And so if there was chronic stress, mm -hmm. you want to hang on to belly fat because yeah. that's how you're going to survive the famine. So understand, physiologic stress leads us to naturally hang on to fat mm -hmm. because we want it to survive. And so the body will naturally turn down thyroid function and turn down hormones under constant demand or stress. So it's almost like a thermostat. It's your exactly. thyroid is kind of like your body's thermostat. When mm -hmm. you kept saying turn down or turn up, I yep. think exactly the thermostat. So it's, it's everything. The thyroid works great when everything's cool and groovy and when you're relaxed and you sleep well and, and mood and there's a flow to life, thyroid works really good. Stress tends to bugger mm -hmm. that up. Gut. We've talked gut. a lot about gut. Mm -hmm. And if we have bad digestion, then we're more prone for autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. We're more prone for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. That means our gut is making antibodies that attacks our thyroid. And we're going to talk about that on a lab and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So if you're making antibodies, that can affect the thyroid. Mm -hmm. All right? So Connected. you want to show them how the thyroid works? <laughs> Take it away! <laughs> I'm going to play with blocks. <laughs> so I love yeah. these. <laughs> Chelsea asked me, where'd you get these? I said, well, I do have children. They're 17 and 19 years old, yeah. but these are the same blocks that they grew up with. So what we do, we just want to give a basic model. We're going to call this our thyroid. Okay, this is our thyroid gland. It's right here in our neck. And that thyroid gland, under the influence of something called thyroid-stimulating hormone, this comes from the brain, okay? This is not a thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. Most doctors, when they measure your thyroid function, this is all they're measuring. It's not a thyroid hormone. It doesn't give you any, doesn't give you a very good idea of how your thyroid's working. In fact, this is accurate only 16% of the time. Wow. It's a bogus lab. 16% So we're time. putting it over here because that's, that's not a thyroid hormone. TSH is from your brain, but it tells the thyroid to make T4. Now T4 is an inactive thyroid hormone. This doesn't do anything, mm -hmm. all right? But it will convert, if we rip an iodine off of it, it'll convert into T3, which T3 then stimulates, it goes into the receptor. These are receptors. T3 can go into your receptor and stimulate the muscle. It can stimulate the brain. It can stimulate the heart, stimulates all of your tissues. That's the receptor. And T3 <clears throat> has to be able to get into that receptor to stimulate those tissues. Piece of cake, right? Very simple. But T4 can also convert into something called reverse T3. Ah, that's very different. Mm -hmm. If this is the gas, T3, this is the break. Reverse T3 does the exact opposite. Under stress, this T4 will convert instead into T3, when T, or reverse T3. When reverse T3 goes into the receptor, it doesn't stimulate. It's a dummy molecule. Mm -hmm. It blocks the receptor. And now T3 tries to get in, and it can't. The receptor is being blocked by reverse T3. Simple concept, mm -hmm. but we'll go through it one more time. And so stress increases this reverse T3, right? Yep. So here's my T4. Mm -hmm. I'm either going to turn it into T3 during happy times and stimulate my muscle and stimulate my brain and feel awesome. Mm -hmm. But under stress, this T4 is going to convert into reverse T3. Oh, and this acts as the break. It blocks the receptor. And now my T3 can't get in. So when the T3 is here, is that when you start having all those symptoms that we mentioned at the beginning? Or I'm sorry, reverse, reverse T3. T well, reverse T3, if under stress, reverse T3 goes up too high, mm -hmm. then you start having symptoms. Symptoms. And if you have Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. you make antibodies. Antibodies also get in the receptor and don't allow T3 to get in. 
Okay. Sweet. So if you have antibodies, Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. if you have reverse T3 from stress, then T3 can't get in. Okay. Pretty simple model. Mm -hmm. But how do we test this? I was just going to say, you had mentioned reverse T3 in antibodies. Yeah. I don't think most people get this tested. They don't. They just get this little guy tested, and that's it. They just it. get TSH, which is coming out of my brain. So it's not a thyroid hormone. 16% accurate. Chris is going to show you what a complete thyroid panel looks like. Most people, 99% of people I've ever seen walk in this office have said, my doctor said my thyroid's normal. But the only thing they've measured is TSH and free T4. T4, remember, is not an active thyroid hormone, and TSH isn't even a thyroid hormone. And this is inaccurate. This is all they've had measured, wow. as demonstrated in that little box on that lab panel, okay? Mm -hmm. But the rest of that page shows all the things you have to measure if you're going to assess somebody's thyroid. You've got to measure T3, you've got to measure reverse T3, and you've got to measure antibodies because those are the things affecting the receptors. And you know what? This is only 50% of the equation. 50% mm -hmm. of the equation is your lab. You know what the other 50% is? Your symptoms. That's right. right, right How do say, you right. feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? That's 50%. There mm -hmm. are multiple studies, journal articles out there that quite clearly say TSH is a horrible, unreliable marker. And they say, quote, the clinical symptomatology should drive treatment. Mm. Most people are only ever treated with T4. That's what they're given. Okay. But what if I'm under stress and this T4 just keeps making tons and tons and tons of reverse T3? I'm in trouble. Yeah. Most doctors don't give patients the active T3 fragment. Hmm. And without the active T3, if I have too much reverse, this whole thing is not going to work. Not going to work. Okay. So, so they get treatment mm -hmm. and the doctor says, your TSH is normal, quit whining, here's your Prozac, go home. <laughs> and, and patients come in and they, they do, they begin to question uh, what's wrong with me, yeah. right? Because I have low mood and I feel terrible and I'm gaining weight and I can't lose weight mm -hmm. and I'm eating right. And we've seen this. I'm mm -hmm. eating right and I'm going to the gym and I'm doing really strong workouts and I can't lose weight. Yeah. And we often find that this is a part of it. One of my last patients um, last week, she was doing CrossFit. Her diet was phenomenal and she lost five, maybe 10 pounds in six months when yeah. she had um, probably a, about 30 or 40 to lose. Turns out it was the thyroid this whole time when she was eating perfectly. I mean, yeah. just phenomenally. So it can be a huge, huge piece why someone's not losing weight. And we're going to, we're going to do, we haven't really done a, a webinar on sleep or no, a, we it's have a, not. a video on sleep. We're going to talk about that because one of the common things I see <clears throat> is that woman is eating right and exercising. Doing everything Her thyroid right. could be off. Her sleep could be off. If mm -hmm. you're not sleeping well, that can affect it as too. Mm -hmm. So we never use thyroid as an artificial stimulus to make you lose weight. But oftentimes we find that people that aren't losing weight, like that kind of woman mm -hmm. says, oh yeah, my hair is falling out and I'm tired and my legs are achy and my nails are peeling. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's the clinical picture that says low thyroid. Okay? So just to kind of recap, you were saying symptoms trump everything, but it's also important to get really good in-depth labs to pair that with your symptoms, right. correct? And, and okay. just measuring TSH, this isn't doing it. <laughs> not cutting it. It's not cutting it. It's not cutting it. No, not even close. So we wanted to explain that because a lot of people get confused. You probably know more about thyroid now than some family doctors in town. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's okay, but at least you understand you need to request that full lab panel. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a problem I run into. Patients will take this knowledge and they'll go to their doctor and they'll say, I want a full thyroid panel. I want all that done. And they're either yeah. denied and oftentimes that means their doctor's just not that familiar mm -hmm. with how to assess all those variables. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Mm -hmm. Most docs just look at TSH and that's all they're really familiar with. So if you want a more in-depth panel, that's something that we can certainly help you with. Absolutely. Chris, do we uh, generate any questions from anybody at this point? Not so much. Okay, I bored you to death. That's <laughs> terrible. That's terrible. So, so the thing you remember with, with thyroid, if you think you're having these symptoms, is get the full lab mm -hmm. done. Um, but believe in yourself. Believe in, in what you're saying is true. And if you're not getting the right answer, then look for a clinician that can really help you assess that mm -hmm. more completely. But part of the responsibility falls back on you. If this thyroid is malfunctioning mm -hmm. because of stress, you've got to take responsibility and nurture a better sleep cycle. Mm -hmm. You've got to calm your brain down. You've got to look at your commitment and your schedule and decide, am I, am I running around like a chicken with my head cut off? Mm -hmm. Am I giving my brain time to be calm? Am I, am I meditating? Am I exercising? Am I doing things to help get my body in a nice 
flow rhythm of energy mm -hmm. such that I can expect my thyroid to work well. Well, that brings up a good point. Not every patient who has some of those symptoms, they don't always have to go on medication. Like you were saying, meaning exactly. maybe we could implement a lifestyle change, mm -hmm. meditation, some iodine, some adaptogens, yep. and then the thyroid just kind of naturally works itself out in a way. It can. doesn't always have to mean, oh, you've got to be on medicine forever. Potentially not. And sometimes it means right now you're in a hole and as we work you out of this stress piece, you need some T3 for a short period of time, mm -hmm. but then as things improve, you don't need that long term. Yeah. So going on thyroid doesn't mean that you have to be on it indefinitely, mm -hmm. because when the thyroid is not performing, the impacts that we see on the body, blood sugars are very hard mm -hmm. to control. So we often see people with diabetes and thyroid is a part of that. Yeah. So controlling or managing the thyroid can help the blood sugars work much, much better. It's easier to lose weight. When we carry extra belly fat, that fat is not dormant. Mm -hmm. It's causing damage. Belly fat's making cytokines, which now are beginning to affect your insulin receptors. It can affect your blood vessels. It can affect your brain. Mm -hmm. So it does, it does create a lot of problems. And women that get pregnant with low thyroid have much more risk of miscarriage mm. uh, and of, e of even uh, of fetal issues mm. when they're low, if they go through their pregnancy with low thyroid. So oh, well. it's something to, uh, of importance. Mm -hmm. So we think this is a very important topic. We yeah. hope it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope our little demonstration was helpful in, in understanding it. And again, there's no quiz, so you don't have to memorize any of this, but it's just to understand there's, there's, it's a multi-pronged issue mm -hmm. that can affect many, many things in your physiology. And it's just part of your energy systems, energy systems being hormones, mm -hmm. thyroid, cortisol, gut. sleep, gut, okay? All those contribute to your energy overall. So if you're fatigued, it isn't always thyroid, but thyroid is often a part of it, mm -hmm. okay? Perfect. All right. I think next time we had a list of things we're going to get mm -hmm. into. We're going to go over some weight loss topics and we're going to get into sleep. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll select one of those Some for next minutes. week. Yep. And uh, if you have any suggestions of something you want to hear us talk about, we're open to suggestion. Perfect. All right. So All right. thank you for joining us and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye now. Mm -hmm.